This simple day trading strategy has helped me make over $30,000 per month and will help you reach your first 10K month as a trader. This strategy is called the order block strategy. And if you don't know when to enter and exit positions correctly every single time, this strategy right here will give you a predictable way to know exactly when to enter positions and when to exit to make the most amount of money. And I'm going to break this entire strategy down from step one. So stick around. The first thing we have to understand about this strategy is that we as traders do not have that much influence on the market. And the reason why is because there's people who have millions and millions and millions, even sometimes billions of dollars in positions, and they are the ones who make these massive moves and drive the market. So my goal as a trader is to enter where they enter and exit where they exit. As simple as that. Kind of just like glorified supply and demand. And the reason why we call it an order block is because when we have these massive moves that are created by people who control the market, typically there's going to be people here that have massive positions that do not get filled. So let's say Joshua here has a $1.5 million position in this exact area and it doesn't get filled the first time around. What do you guys think is going to happen when this stock eventually comes back up to that area where he had his order placed? It's most likely going to fill the second time around and we're going to see a very similar reaction to the first time we had that massive drop. So when using this order block strategy, you're going to know exactly when to enter, exactly when to sell. From start to finish, everything will be planned out rather than you just taking random trades. So now that you know what an order block is, let me show you how to draw it and let me show you how to take positions with these order blocks. I'm also going to throw in a live example as well, just so you can see exactly how these order blocks really work. So to start drawing these order blocks, the first thing you want to make sure is that you go over to your settings on TradingView and you scroll down to where you see session and data modification. Make sure that you change from regular trading hours to extended trading hours. This allows you to see all of the data from post-market and pre-market every single day, and you'll be able to see exactly where the areas are where people are buying and selling. So this is how we draw an order block. What we're looking for is a massive move that ends up breaking structure of the stock. So for example, you can see right here that we're moving in a massive uptrend for a long time, but then all of a sudden there's one order or one massive group of orders that end up tanking all the way past this area right here, changing the structure of the stock and no longer being in a guaranteed solid uptrend. So after we spot that massive move that ends up breaking structure, we need to find the candle before it that is in the opposite direction. So for this specific example, it's going to be this green candle right here that's right before this massive move down. Now this is very, very important. What we need to do for a bearish order block is we need to grab the bottom of the candle body to the top of the candle wick. So drag that order block out. And as you can see, as soon as we come up to this block, we do not have enough strength to push through it and we immediately reject off of it, starting a massive new downtrend. This is exactly how we're gonna utilize this order block. Now that was how you draw a bearish order block, but for a bullish order block that's moving to the upside, what you're gonna do is pretty much the exact same thing. You're gonna find a massive move here that breaks structure. So as you can see right here, we have a break of structure and it actually changes character to an upside trend instead of a downside trend. So you're going to use the last candle that is before the big move that is in the opposite direction. As you can see, that's that candle right there. And you're going to draw from the bottom of the wick to the top of the body. Extend that out and now you've got yourself a bullish order block. So as you can see on our chart, we've got a bearish order block and we've got a bullish order block. This is just for you guys to remember. Bearish order block equals top of wick to bottom of candle body. Bullish order block equals bottom of wick to top of candle body. This is very, very, very important. If you don't get this down, most likely these order blocks will not work for you. Now, one thing to mention, you don't have to have this, but it would be nice if there is a fair value gap present for that order block to be even more valid. So what I mean by that is, on that massive drop, we want to make sure that we have an unmitigated price. So you can see right here that this wick does not come up and touch this wick, which means that the price is not mitigated, which will most likely have a bigger reaction when we come up to the order block. Now, if that wick 
came all the way up like this, the order block is still considered valid, but might be less strong when the stock comes back up to touch it. So if there is a fair value gap present at that order block, it will be even significantly stronger. So you can see right here, boom, there's your fair value gap. That's 100% present. You can use that to your advantage. Now to enter a position off this order block, the main thing that we're going to do is we're going to pay attention to these two reactions. The first one is going to be a rejection straight off the order block like this. And the second one is going to be a breakthrough of the order block, a retest of the order block, and then a continuation to the upside. These two reactions right here are going to be the most important and the most common reactions that you see at an order block. So for example, when we scroll down to our example that we had before, check out what happens. We come right back up to this order block and the first thing we do is we don't even actually get the chance to touch it fully. We get up to the order block and immediately reject off of it. That shows that we have strength pushing the stock down and we're most likely not going to continue to the upside. And if we scroll later on in the order block life, you can see right here that we actually have a breakthrough in this area, a retest of the order block and a continuation to the upside. So here is a perfect example of both of these reactions being present. Here's the first reject and coming back up and retesting the order block. So you could have taken this position right here, or you could have taken this position bouncing off the order block and the retest. For our stop loss, we're always gonna make sure that we are placing it on the other side of the order block. Because here's the deal, guys. If we come back up and we come all the way and break this order block, we are most likely invalidating our position. So this is probably going to continue to the upside, almost guaranteed, right? You can see, for example, exactly what happened the time that it happened. We came down and we did exactly that. So we always want to place our stop loss on the other side of the order block. Now, in the case that the order block is really, really big, sometimes there's order blocks that are this large. And obviously, if you place your stop loss this big, you're going to be down like 20 to 50% on a position, and it's probably not going to be the best stop loss ever. What I recommend in that case is to put your stop loss above 50% of the order block. The reason still is because if we go over this 50% of the order block area, I have a very, very strong feeling that we are probably going to just continue to the upside. If we don't get a reject within the first half of the order block, it's probably because the stock is pretty damn strong and is going to continue pushing through it and to the upside. So the same thing goes for a bullish order block as well. What we're looking for is going to be a stop loss on the other side of the zone. So you can use right here. Or if it's a massive order block, the exact same theory applies. Over 50% of the order block is probably a good place to put your stop loss. Now, one thing that you're going to notice on this bullish position here is that we have a really, really long wick that breaks past the order block. I really love to put my stop losses below that wick because there's going to be lots of times where we come down, touch this wick, and then bounce straight off of it. And it's very, very common. So placing your stop loss below that wick will allow you to actually still capitalize on the move and not get stopped out early. And as you can see, on both of these positions, you would be wildly successful. And so to answer the question of where do you exit, it's actually very, very simple. What you're gonna do is you're gonna hold all the way until the next order block. That's it. So find the area where you see the next order block down. So you can see this probably is gonna be a good one right here because we have that fair value gap present. You can see, boom. That fair value gap is present. There is no wick meeting and touching in between. So what that most likely means is we might see a reaction on the other side of that area. Place that and extend it all the way through. And as you can see, now you have a very clear area to target for your position. And just like that, we've got a perfect position right here. And it's as simple as that, guys. We're gonna take positions to the downside, either rejecting the order block or breaking through and continuing to the upside and it goes the exact same way for the opposite direction so this is what a bullish order block would look like right we're going to grab the top of the candle body to the bottom of the wick and we're going to extend that out now there's two things that can happen when we get to this bullish order block again first we can either come back down and bounce off of it immediately presenting a really really strong reaction or we can come through 
retest it, and continue to the downside. So it's literally the exact same thing as the bearish order block I showed you guys earlier. Either we could have rejected or we could have broken through and retested. Same exact thing. Now, here are some things to avoid when you are trading these order blocks. One thing you guys got to pay attention to, like I said before, is that the most important thing we are watching is the reaction at the order block. So as you can see here, this reaction is really strong. We have a beautiful rejection off the order block. And as you can see, we continue all the way down to the next order block. But what if we have a reaction like this, where we come down into the order block. And as you can see right here, we just start doing this. We just start dancing in the order block. In your opinion, is this going to be a valid order block? The answer is no, because if you see right here, we have a move that does not show us a reaction that clearly signifies that we're going to continue in the direction that we want it to go, right? So in this case, and in all cases of trading, we want to be able to know, quote unquote, know where the market is going to go. If you see right here, we have no clue what direction the market's going to go because there's no way to tell. It's chopping in between the order block left and right. So that's why I say the reaction is always key. Pay attention to exactly where you are taking these positions and make sure that you're taking them with strong reactions, not weak garbage coming into the order block and just chopping for 45 minutes. You're not going to really know what's going on at that point. So take very, very, very strong precaution when it comes to finding out what reaction you're getting at the order block. And that advice right there is going to help you become a profitable trader when using this strategy, almost guaranteed. Now let's look at a live trade example. We're back at break even here. If it can't hold the level, don't force the trade. Last thing I want you guys to do is try and force the trade and then make a stupid decision. Back at break even here. We're just gonna sit and break even, see if there wants to be a move that's to be made. Go, time to rock. We're up 5%. Let's see if we can make something happen here. This does look a bit strong, but we're not coming through and breaking lows yet, which is a bit of an issue. We're up 7% right now. 15 seconds left for us to hold these lows. I like that. If we can hold that, we're good. I don't know if that wants to hold, but if it does, fantastic. Beautiful. We're up 20% here. That's all day. Go ahead and trim some off here at 25%. Trimming some off there at 25%. We got another area down here that I'm looking at trimming. We're gonna go ahead and let it go until that point. Beautiful, man. We're up 40% here. Go ahead and trim some more off here. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. There it goes, baby. Holding the rest until target. Also, forgot to mention that I did alert this entire trade from start to finish to my one-on-one -on -one mentorship students. So they were able to follow me along the way from start to finish in live trading. I'm basically holding their hand and walking them to profitability. So if you are struggling to find a strategy or you're struggling to stay consistent or you're struggling with making money as a trader and you just continue losing, go to the description below and apply for my one-on-one -on -one mentorship where I will personally teach you how to become a six-figure trader. Just look at my results for the month of June alone. I lost two positions and every single other position was green and every single position was taken live with my mentorship students. So if you wanna be a part of it, go to the description. We don't have that many spots. I'll take that all day. I got runners now, I'm leaving my runners. I'm gonna let my stop loss go to right around here-ish. Go ahead and trim some off since we're down at this resistance area that I'm talking about. Trimming more off here at plus 92%. I'm out. I'm out of the rest, 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 I'm out of the rest. All right, guys, so we made about $1,300 on that position, and this is exactly how I did it. So I found my first order block up here at this area where we had a massive move and a fair value gap, which means that this is probably going to be a very valid order block. So I grabbed the bottom of the candle body to the top of the wick, and I dragged that all the way out. And as you guys can see, we tested it once, and then we broke through it. So on the second test, I wanted to see if we were going to fall through that order block or not. My target, my first target was going to be down here at this little area where we have some resistance. This was the area where we had the largest potential to bounce if we were to bounce anywhere. 
So I set my first trim here and my final target was going to be all the way at this bottom order block. So this is exactly how I took this position. I went over to my two minute time frame, and the first thing I noticed was that we were coming straight through this order block as soon as the market opened. So that gave me an indication right away that we were most likely going to push to the downside. So what did I look for? I told you guys the two reactions. We either are going to do this or we're going to do this. We did not have this one. So what's most likely going to happen? We're gonna fall through the order block, we're gonna retest the order block, and then we're gonna come back down and continue the move. So that's exactly what we did. We fell through the order block, we came back up and retested, and then we came down and broke this low right here, which gave me all the confidence in the world to take this position to the downside. But remember guys, it's all about reaction like I said. As you guys can see, from this point forward, I'm no longer probably gonna use this order block because look, it's just a bunch of choppy garbage. But here, we had a very, very smooth reaction and a very smooth, predictable pattern that looks exactly like this that shows that we're gonna continue going to the downside. Now, remember what I said, guys, for the stop loss, I could have had my stop loss like this all the way above the order block, but for me personally, it made more sense for my stop loss to be above the halfway point of the order block because in theory, if we came all the way back up and we went above halfway point of the order block, I honestly believe that we're gonna continue going to the upside. And that's how you take a perfect trade with this strategy. So now you got a strategy, but even if you have a strategy, you still need so much more to become consistently profitable. So check out this video right here where I show you my exact playbook taking you from zero to $1,000 per day as a day trader.